go down here. You know what, actually? Would you guys mind? Can I erase part of this? Is that okay? We don't, we don't actually need this column anymore. Now that we've done the average, that's done. And those of you that are getting sick to your stomach, don't worry. This is just, I want you to understand the mechanics. We're going to use technology in every other case. But whenever we learn a new idea the first time, I want you to understand the mechanics of what's going on in the calculation. Is that fair? In, in case you need more precision, and you need, just so you know, the TIs can do this. We're going to see how the TIs do this momentarily. Of course, Excel can't do this. All right, Excel cannot do weighted standard deviations or weighted averages. You have to understand the formulas in order to Excel do them. So this is why I'm bringing this up. It's good to know the mechanics and the, and the basis of it. Okay, we got the average of 34 years. Let's take this out. All right. Now, let's set it up kind of like we did for Burton Earning, where we take the data minus the average. Because that is what we did, yes? We had to, we had to do that for Burton Earning. Okay? So, we do 19.5 minus the average of 34. We do 29.5 minus the average of 34. We do 39.5 minus the average, of, and so forth and so on. Now realize 34 is not an exact value, correct? We rounded that to 33.8, so we're going to have a little bit of error built in. That's okay. I can live with that. I can live with that. 59.5 uh, minus the average of 34. Let's figure those out first, yes? Let's figure those values out first. I'm going to check them over here and see if okay, the wrong list. Okay, you guys check my math on this one. I got negative 14 and a half. Then it goes up by 10, yeah? Then 6 and a half, or 5.5, yeah. Then 15.5, then 25.5. Okay, so we're that should because it's all by 10. I, did that. I, I grouped it that way intentionally. Does it work? So all I'm doing is I'm taking the ages, the data, and subtracting the average from each of them to get the average distance. So this one's, these ages are 14 and a half years down from average, four and a half years down from average, five and a half years down from average, 15 and a half, no, excuse me, five and a half years up from average, 14, 15 and a half up, 25 and a half up. Hopefully that makes sense. 59 and a half is above average. It's that far above average, 25.5. Ask questions if you're coming up with questions right now. I want to answer your questions as we're doing this. I don't want this to seem like magic. Now, ask me that question. Uh, not bad. <laughs> I, <all right. laughs> what, go ahead. What, is, what are those numbers again? The How distance? The distance from average. average difference. Negative means they're below average. Positive means they're above. Okay. So, so obviously the 19 and a half year old kids that are on this thing are below average. That's how far below average they are. 14 and a half years below the average of 34. Okay. Okay. Do you remember what happened with Bert's data when we got to this point a couple weeks ago? Of course you can say no. This was like 150 hours ago. But when we added this column, do you remember what happened? Remember what it added to? It zeroed out. Hmm. Why doesn't this one zero out? Why doesn't this one zero? It doesn't, does it? Uh -huh. Why doesn't it? Thank you, Aaron. Remember that. Very nice. Why doesn't this one zero out? Say that again. Burton earnings wasn't grouped. He only had five data points, and we had five individual calculations, right? The problem was Burton earnings weren't grouped. There aren't as many 19-year-olds as there are 29-year-olds, correct? In other words, yeah, there are negative 14.5 years difference, but that happened seven times, yes? And this guy here happens 44 times, and this guy here happens 19 times. You see what I'm saying? You have to account for all of that in the variance. The variance must be accounted for within that. So we'll take care of that momentarily. I promise you this. I promise you this. Let me grab my, my green marker, which I put down here. The first thing I want to do, though, is I want to erase part of this calculation. So I'm going to put it over here. So x bar is about 34. We're going to leave that here. Um, we're going to remember these folks, 10, 15, 7 and a half. I say we, I mean you. The first thing I want you guys to do is I want you to square the differences. Because we had to do that with Burton 32. Square those differences. Square them because we have to get them into that non-negative world. We have to get them in that non-negative world. So we're going to square those differences. I'll, six squared. I'll, I'll do it for you too. See if I do this right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
So I get 210.25, I get 20.25, 30.25, 240 and a quarter, and 650 and a quarter. At this point in the game, you don't put the negatives there, right? We, can't, we square it, right? Yes, that takes care of the negatives. That's the idea is when you square them, the negatives go away. Cody's idea from two weeks ago is still my favorite absolute value. Still my favorite idea is the absolute value. But mathematically, you should be squaring, not absolute value. Yes. At this point in the game, we have lost the realm of reality. Because we have squared years. Kelly's like, I lost it. We, we had lost it 15 years ago. <laughs> we have lost the years, and the years are now years squared, yes? The years are now years squared, which doesn't mean anything, does it? No, it doesn't mean anything, unfortunately. That's a problem. That's a problem. But we've got to take care of that at the end by doing what? <laughs> by taking a square by taking a square root. Yes. We're gonna take a square root at the end. And we're gonna do we're just fine with that. Okay? But the first now at this point in the game, when we were doing birds, we added these up, correct? We added these up, and that was the so we call it the sum of squares. Now we can just add these five things up, correct? Boom, 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 add them up and be done. But what's this, what's the problem with doing that? If we just add those five things up? This one's that? An average of what? What does it assume if we simply add those five numbers together right now? If we just add those five to get numbers together right now, how many races, racers does it assume we're in the race? Only five. It assumes that there was one 19 and a half year old with that variance. That there was one 29 and a half year old with that variance. That there was one, can we fix that? How do we fix that? We're going to have to take that that many times, yes? Or take that that many times. So in other words, we have to add them up like with Bert, but we've got to add it up the correct number of times until we have 81 people accounted for. Now, I don't recommend we do that. I recommend we make one more column, and I, I appreciate your guys' patience. One more column, one more column, one more column, boom. And then you're out of the woods. Do F times this. So in other words, now we'll add the correct number of things together. So you've got to do 7 times this, 44 times that. I'll go to 4. Don't worry about it. You don't want to do it. 6 is L4 times L5. I get some pretty heinous values here. And again, these are just silly. These, are, these, these units don't make any sense anymore. So years squared doesn't make any sense. Don't worry. We'll take care of that. 1471.8. I get 891. I get 574 and three quarters. I get 2402.5 and I get 650 and a quarter. You see how they're they're definitely different in most cases than their corresponding counterparts here. This one's the same. Because there's only one dude in that one, or one or maybe one guy. There's only one guy in that very first one. But every one is going to be different because you have to account for that many people. Okay, so far? Yep. Why did you round the first one and not the third? I didn't. The TI told me something. I'm sorry. Oh, it's 75, isn't it? The TI was showing me only two other places. Thank you. That should be 0.75. I was just, it only shows you five places in the window, is it? Thank you. Add them up. Now add them up. Just like a bird. So the summation of these f's times the variances. Jen, go ahead and give it to me again. 5,990.25. Squared years. What the hell is a squared year? Hell if I know. I don't know where it is. It's a year squared. It's a squared year. It's a, it's, it's a bastardization of the data. It is. Because we have to get rid of the negative, so we squared it versus absolute valuing it. If we absolute valued it, we delete bastardize it some other way. But you have to do it. We can undo it. We can undo it. Okay. Now, at this point with Bert, we had summed up all his variances. What did we then do with those variances? Somebody just said it. We averaged it by dividing. Yes, we're going to go ahead and divide this. 
We're going to go ahead and divide this by how many people are in the race. That's the total variance. We now have to divide by the number of people in the race to get the average variance. Go ahead, go ahead, tell me. It is minus one. Remember that, that goofy, ridiculous math thing? It's minus one. It's 81 minus one. Why? If you want to know why, I got a proof on the enrichment page of the website. You actually divide by one less. By 80, not by 81. It's 100% correct. Good memory. Good memory. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird mathematical reason. If you already divided by 81, it won't be that much different. It will not be that much different mathematically. On small samples, it makes a huge difference. On big ones, not so much. So now we've got this, this divided by basically n minus 1. So we have this 5,990.25 divided by 80. One, or excuse me, by 80. What does that come out to be? 74.87825. I'm going to call that 75. How's that? Okay. Can we call that 75 just because we're getting too much precision that we don't deserve anymore? 75 years squared on average, which is dumb, right? Years squared. Years squared. So how do we try to fix it? Randy's like, I don't know, I checked out like 10 minutes ago. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Kelly's like, I checked out yesterday. Well, how do we fix this year square? Square root. So you, you're finally done when you do S, which is this, this is what we're looking for the whole time, sample standard deviation. Square root of that. Which ends up being about what? It's just, it's just, it's just under 9, isn't it? 8.7, there you go. Or 9, we're going to call 9. That's totally fine. 8.7 years. How are our estimates? We said 10, we said 15, we said 7.5. I don't know, 10 is pretty damn close. I was a little under. 10 was pretty close to OB and over on average. Those two estimates are average out there. It's about what it should have been. How was the budget again? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what the hell did we just do for 20 minutes? I love, I love. No, no, no. I love this. I love this because that's why that is the only time you'll ever do a group standard deviation by hand. Because by the time you get done, you're like, okay, I was doing something when I started this, and I've now forgotten what the hell I was doing. It's the same thing we did with Burt. We already had the average of 34 years. You now have a measure of the variation around that average as well. On average, you're about nine years off of 34, which means because the data is roughly bell-shaped, yes, which I think we agreed it is. We can make a histogram in a minute. We'll get a histogram momentarily. The data is roughly bell-shaped, which means roughly how much of the data should be within nine years of this. So in other words, from 23 to say 43, if I go up and down nine, no, uh, 25 to 43, what percentage of the data should be within one standard deviation? 68. About 68, there's your two thirds, about 68. How about if I go out two standard deviations? That's where we go out to what percentage? That's about your 95. That's where they, that's why we care about it, Kelly. That's why we care about it. Because then you can make a statistical big deal about a significantly old or significantly younger finisher. If you need the standard deviation, talk about the variance around the average, not just the average itself. But outside of the Portland Marathon, you also need the standard deviation to talk about things like, did the unemployment rate really change from January to March? It went from 7.6% to 7.4%. Did it really change? Maybe. We have to know the standard deviation around that also. If the standard deviation around that is 0.01%, then hell yeah, it changed. But if the standard deviation is 3%, it probably didn't change at all. It just fluctuated a little bit. That's why you want to know. But right now, I think you all need to go get some air. Because that was a lot of math. That's much more math than we'll do in a long break the rest of the class, even. It's a lot of math. It's great. It's great stuff. And if you ever need to, if you ever need to set up Excel to do this kind of thing, you now know what you have to do to do it. You have to do that, essentially, in Excel, which we'll show you how to do that eventually as we, as we go through the class. But we also have our TIs, which is a much more direct way of getting these values. So let's take five and do it with the TIs, yes. Yes, but take five, get some air, please. They're starting to turn green in here. I apologize. Yeah. 